And now I want to bring in from the Bonson Group, their managing partner, David Bonson. David, uh, you know, you had uh, been skeptical about the Federal Reserve hiking rates. Uh, and, and, of course, now the street sees an avalanche of rate hikes over the next two or three years. Where are you right now with respect to the Fed? Well, what's funny is the street sees less rate hikes than the Fed itself does. And the street has been right for 13 years and the Fed has been wrong for 13 years. They have never once met up to their actual dot plot forecast. And so if we get two or three rate hikes next year and another three the year after, uh, that gets you to 125, 150 basis point Fed funds rate. That is still 100 basis points lower than pre-COVID mm. in two years from now. And it's still a negative real interest rate. Great point. Hey, the Fed seems to be serving two masters. And if you listen to Powell in that, in that press conference, it was sort of excruciating. On one hand, Wall Street and the wealth effect. The other hand, Main Street and social justice. Can they pull it off? No, they can't. But I don't think that the challenge is that they're trying to serve both. I think it's that I honestly think, Charles, we all know what they're trying to do is that they have basically set up where they have this inflation and and uh, a full employment mandate. And yet they have become the coddler of risk assets. And that's not just Wall Street. OK, th th this impacts Main Street as well. They believe in the wealth effect. I think they're wrong, but I think they genuinely believe in it. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter. That's what they're going to do. Uh, they cannot have federal government debt service go up 400 basis points. It cannot happen. Yeah, I think so the already... Fed right now has to figure out. A... No, I, I was going to say, I think with the last I looked, we spent 500 billion just servicing the debt. So, you know, a, a much higher interest rate environment than that. It just it's, it's, it's just. It sounds nuts to me, to your point. Let me, uh, before I let you go, because people want to know what to buy in this sort of environment, and there's a lot of anxiety. I'm fielding more calls than normal. Uh, how can investors stay in this market and also get some sleep at night? Yeah, there were things that the prior guest said I agreed with and things I vehemently disagreed with. I just don't believe the argument that because something's down 50 percent, you should go in and buy it. Some of the stuff that's down 50 and 70 percent is going to go down 90 percent. <laughs> there was a lot of overvalued froth in this market. So we want to focus on dividend growth that is less vulnerable to credit cycles, has a growing free cash flow to hedge against the Fed raising interest rates, and is just less volatile overall. You have a better risk profile going into next year, yeah. dividend growth equities. Yeah, David, I agree with you. A lot of times people say uh, emerging markets because they're due. It just doesn't sound like the most professional thing in the world. But, you know, a lot of people go that way. Uh, really always appreciate your expertise. And I think people need to really look into these dividends. They should be a portion of your portfolio. Have a great weekend, my friend. Thanks. You too, Charles.